Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, we're going to talk about power supplies, uh, wattage and efficiency today. Now the reason why I'm at home and not in the shop is that uh, it's just before New Year and I'm on holiday. Now I was going to go into the shop, I was going to take my PC into the shop and everything and do loads of practical experiments. But I did some initial calculations in Notepad with a calculator and realised that it wasn't actually worth running the experiment. It would have taken me about five out, five or six hours to do the experiment and I already know exactly what the answer to it is going to be and it's not very exciting. Uh, but I want to share it with you anyway because I think more people need to know this information. So let's jump into it. So what we want to talk about today is the reason why kilowatt power supplies are stupid. Now I've done a video before that proved quite perfectly um, that uh, running a large wattage power supply was a waste of time. I did a video where I demonstrated that a modern computer, so you know, uh, an Intel i7 Skylake or an i5 scale Skylake with a modern GTX 10 series GPU was using approximately 250 watts under load. Uh, you know, you could nudge that figure up with a bit of overclocking and some thrashing. You could maybe try and get to 300, but the, the bottom line was, when you're running games and that kind of thing, you're going to be sitting at maybe 250 watts. So therefore, all these people running around with 800 watt power supplies and all the rest of it, waste of money. You don't need them. Complete waste of money. Do not buy these big wattage power supplies. You don't need it. If you go to somewhere like PCPartPicker.com to spec up your computer, they will give you an estimated power supply requirement, which is actually pretty bang on the money. If you plumb all of this into PC Part Picker, you know, i5, GTX 10 series, etc., it'll tell you about the same as what I've just said. It'll tell you about 250 watts. So therefore, under spec your power supply, you don't need anything big. Don't buy a cheap power supply. That's different. We'll get to that. But don't bother going with like 800 or 1000 watts because you think you have a high power PC because you don't. So next, um, not long after I made that video, there was a new wave of uh, like big kilowatt power supplies came along. Um, Corsair and EVGA and all of that crowd, they started rolling out with like 1100, 12 watt, 100. I think there are some 1300 watt power supplies. So 1.3 kilowatt power supplies for a desktop PC computer. Absolutely mad, absolutely insane. Um, and when the reviewers got hold of these, the only possible way they could come, the only things that they could come up with to justify these insane uh, wattage ratings for these power supplies was, were their two excuses were, oh, but if your power supply is running at low load, that means the fan can go into shut off mode, which means it's gonna be quieter. And it's like, no, you just need a good fan for that. Uh, I've got an RMX series power supply in this. It's a 650, which is massively overrated. However, even when the fan is spinning under load, this power supply is still silent. You don't, you know, you don't need to get a high wattage power supply for it to be silent. Likewise, at work, I've got a Corsair TX power supply, which is 650 watts, and it's noisy as hell. The wattage of your power supply has nothing to do with how loud it is. End of story. You can buy a low wattage power supply and if it's got a good fan in it and it's got a good thermal management system in it, it won't be noisy. Hell, even the Corsair CX series, so just their builder series power supplies, they're pretty quiet. They're good power supplies in my opinion. I still like them. So yeah, so that's that one out of the water straight away. The other excuse they used was efficiency curves. They reckoned that if you were running like a thousand watt power supply, your power supply would be running like in the middle of its loading curves um, uh, or, you know, lower down in the load curves where it is more efficient because a power supply has an efficiency curve like that. Um, and obviously you want to sit at the high point of the efficiency, which is below maximum load, but, a, but well above minimum load. And the actual range is approximately the best is between about 50% and 80%. The sweet spot is like 80% load. That's where you want to be. That gives you maximum efficiency. But their theory was that if you are sitting lower down in the efficiency curve, you're using less energy and thus it's saving you money and it's being more economical and it's saving the world, etc., etc. That was their excuse for why you should have a 1.3 kilowatt power supply in your computer. So let's run the numbers on that, shall we? Hmm. So 
uh, we've got a 250 watt load. So 250 watts. Uh, and so therefore, it's going to take us four hours to use up one kilowatt hour of energy. Because four times 250 is a thousand. So in four hours, we, we will have used one kilowatt hour of energy. So four hours per one kilowatt hour. And in the UK at the moment, a kilowatt hour is approximately 13 pence. I mean, the average is actually like 12 and a half pence or something like that. But let's assume worst case numbers here. Let's try and make these numbers as big as we can to get the biggest gaps we can to get the absolute, you know, the most, the biggest gains we can see from efficiency. So 13 pence. <clears throat> so let's also assume that we're going to thrash this PC. It's going to be on all the time. So let's say that it's on for 12 hours a day under load. That we've, we've got a 250 watt gaming load for 12 hours of gaming per day, five days a week. I don't think anyone will be able to come up with bigger numbers than that. Like, even if you leave your computer on overnight, it's going to be idling. I mean, I suppose if you're running like uh, if you're running folding at home overnight or something like that, you've got some CPU load in there. But uh, come on, let's be fair here. The vast majority of people don't leave their computers on overnight, whatever. So let's assume that it's on for 12 hours a day under full load with the game running and everything. Because remember, under idle, you're going to drop to like 50 watts load, maybe even lower. So uh, let's assume 12 hours per day. 12 hours per day. Uh, and that means uh, that 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we're going to use 3 kilowatt hours of energy per day. So 3 kilowatt hour per day. And if we're on 5 days a week, um, that is 280 days a year. So 280 days per year. Okay, so far so good. Now, um, so now we want to consider what our efficiency is. So a 250 watt load, if we have a 500 watt bronze rated power supply, um, 250 watts load is 50%. Uh, now, if you look at the efficiency curves, you'll find that a bronze rated power supply at 50% load is probably running approximately 85% efficient. Um, so we're losing 15% efficiency here. We're burning that as heat or sound, heat, buzzing, etc., etc. So 15% loss. Now, so 15% loss. Uh, if we've got, to, uh, if we're using three kilo hours per day, uh, a 15% loss is going to lose us um, 150 watt hours per kilowatt hour. We're using three of those a day, which means we're burning 450 watt hours per day in waste. In waste per day. So let's calculate how much that is in pence. So in that case, if we go 13 pence times 0.45 kilowatt hours, so that is 5.85 pen, 5 pence per day in waste. 5.85p per day in waste. So if we're on 280 days a year, times 280, divided by 100 to get it into pounds, we're wasting 16 pounds and 38 pence. So our bronze rated power supply is burning us 16 pounds and 38 pence a year in losses. So that's not how much it costs per uh, total, that's how much it costs in waste energy. Uh, and that's assuming that we're on full load 12 hours a day, five days a week. So pretty worst case scenario in my opinion. If you have your computer on for more than that, then you're just burning money anyway. So, so far so good. So what about the, um, what about the, the super efficient one then? So let's say that we have a 1000 watt platinum rated power supply. Now, with a 250 watt load, that's going to be sitting down at like 25% total load. And that puts it at a pretty bad place on its efficiency curve. So that blows that one out of the water. However, uh, even in the worst case scenarios, these power supplies are still pretty darn efficient. Uh, with a platinum rating, you're still looking at about 90% efficiency there. So, sure, 
It's 90% efficient then. Um, and, you know, you I th at some point that efficiency curve is going to drop off and it's not 100% clear where that is, but it's going to be super low. It's going to be down in the sort of the single digit load levels. So we're pretty, we're pretty confident that we're going to be getting, say, 90%. We'll be generous. We'll, we'll be generous and give it 90%. It might not even get that much, but let's say it does. 90%, so that's 10% losses. So by the same calculations, that means it's going to burn 100 watt hours, uh, which will turn out to be 300 watt hours per day in a day. Uh, so let's run that again. So 13 times 0.3. So that is going to loot us 3.9 pence a day. So 3.9 p per day in waste times 280 divided by 100. So that gives us £10.92. All right, so bravo, you saved six pounds a year, assuming that your computer is running at gaming load 12 hours a day, five days a week. It's, it's nothing. I spend that much on lunch a day. Come on, you know, really? So that kind of fixes that. And now that is using the worst case numbers that I could come up with. And then the reality is that most people realistically are probably going to buy a nice power supply, say a 500 or a 600, say a 550 watt gold rated power supply, because they're not buying a piece of crap. They've got, say, an RMX series power supply like I have, 650 watts platinum rated. So my 650 watt platinum rated power supply, if I check my curves, my well, my 650 watt gold rated power supply, sorry, uh, so the 250 watt load, that is also going to be netting about 90% efficiency. So my RMX series power supply is also getting that 90% efficiency and thus it's costing me about you know, £11 in losses per year instead of £16 in losses per year. And then my RMX uh, series power supply cost me about £90 rather than one of these big like 1200 watt power supplies, which is like 120, 130 pounds, that kind of money. So it's costing 30 or 40% less than these big, huge power supplies for exactly the same savings. So whatever way you paint it, the big, you know, the big four figure watt power supply is still dumb and a waste of money. Um, so Okay, let's say let's say you're that guy who's going to be in the comments who says, I've got an i7 that's overclocked with SLI 1080s. Cool. Okay, you may have managed to pull a 500 watts from the wall there. You may have ma you you might be running about 500 watts load. So okay, sure, you might want you know you're going to need that 650 watt power supply for that to be comfortable. So okay, well let's have a look at that then. So. Uh, let me bring up a number. So here is just those efficiencies once again. So let's say you've got my RMX 650 watt power supply pulling 500 watts. So at that point, we're going to be up at, say, you know, 80% load or something like that. Now, if you look, 50% load is 92% efficient. 100% is 88% efficient. So your 80% watt load, your 80% load is going to be about 90%, maybe 89%, which means it's still costing you the same in efficiency losses. Yes, it's costing you more overall because you're using more power, but your efficiency losses, the reason why I'm being told that I should buy a thousand watt power supply just isn't there because the the efficiency curve counts for over the the sweet spot as well as under the sweet spot. So we're still not worth it. Uh, so that's it. That's all I could come up with. And that's why I didn't bother taking my PC into work today. So if you reckon that you can come up with any counter argument to this, by all means, let me know in the comments. And that's not a challenge. This isn't me saying sort of, 
no, you know, I, I don't want to have an argument with someone. I'm just scratching my head over this. And I'm like, so why then? What's the point? The only reason why these big four figure watt power supplies could ever be imaginably worthwhile is for an extreme rig. And by extreme, I'm talking four graphics cards and, you know, uh, an, an N2O cooled CPU that is overclocked to six gigahertz and using 250 watts of power on its own. And your graphics cards are overclocked and at full load and also using 200 watts each and just... I'm genuinely struggling to come up with a scenario where you might need that kind of power. So let me know what you guys think, because as far as I'm concerned, kilowatt power supplies are dumb. That's the end of the video. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you all next time in the shop. Bye.